We have a form. We have front end validation. Now we're going to pivot to the back end for a bit, mostly, in order to get something working. We're going to start with basic server side form processing. This is the tried and true way that people have been handling forms on the web for decades now, and there's really nothing wrong with it. It'll work in any browser, and it'll work even if the user has JavaScript turned off. We're also going to handle submission with Ajax and do everything dynamically, but that'll come later. This dual solution allows us to handle requests even if something goes wrong with our JS, which is always nice to have. We'll need a thanks page though, so very quickly, add a file named thanks.ejs to slash views. And in it, put the following code. Simple and boring. Let's add a route, which we can do in slash route slash contact.js, right here. Put it below the initial get, but above the module exports line. It should look like this. That's all we need to do, other than saving the file. We're already importing and using that router file in app.js, so we don't need to make any edits there. Restart your server, again, nodemon is your friend, and navigate to localhost port 3000 slash contact slash thanks. There we go. You should see our extremely basic thanks page. Cool. Let's move on by heading back to slash route slash contact.js. We're going to handle a post here, catching the form submission. But by handle, I don't just mean send the form data along to an SMT provider. There's stuff we need to do first. A thing that would be smart to do is validate the form on the server end. This is especially useful in case someone visits the form with JavaScript disabled, which would potentially allow them to skip the front end validation we set up last week. Most modern browsers do some validation on their own, but I suppose we might get somebody visiting from an older machine. We're going to do this by creating a middleware function, one which includes a big scary email validating regular expression that I borrowed from the interwebs. So below our two gets, let's add a post catch. Here's the code. Okay, here's the regular expression, which I am very definitely cutting and pasting because the odds of me typing this out correctly are pretty slim. Boom! That's hideous. Alright, onward we go. Alright, we should be all set. For speed purposes, we're going pretty light on validation here. Basically, did they fill in each box, and does the email address look like an email address? That's all we're looking for. We can't really test this without changing a bunch of code, but I did test it while writing this tutorial, and it does work. You get forwarded to an ugly block of JSON, which isn't spectacular, but in the spirit of keeping this short, we're going to skip writing an error page. I'm going to skip right now to showing you that block of JSON. There we go. I submitted a totally blank form and it found all four problems with the data. Back in contact.js, note that next at the end. That tells us to move on to our next piece of middleware, in this case the one that's going to send our email, well, sort of, and forward the user to the thanks page. We do that by writing a second post function below the first, like this. That's all we need, again, for now. Save that file, open up slash public slash javascripts slash site.js. We need to make a small update so that our form actually does anything other than logging to the console when submitted. So change this whole if block to the following code. That's it. Save the file, refresh your server if you need to, head back to the contact page, fill out the form properly,
and submit. As you can see, the data is logged in our node console. We're done with this step. Don't worry, we will eventually be actually sending an email instead of just using console.log on the back end. Next time we'll look into creating an API endpoint and talking to it with XHR, aka Ajax. See you then.